watching the Pat O'Hara Show with host Sean McDowell on Preds TV. It is always a pleasure to come to you here on Preds TV with the Pat O'Hara Show, but it's a little more pleasurable when the Orlando Predators are riding a great winning streak the way they are now after back-to-back -back victories respectively over Dallas two weeks ago and this past Saturday night at the hands of of Alabama, winning that one in Huntsville, Alabama, 48 to 31. Pat O'Hara's Predators, man, I'll tell you, they came from behind and looked very good in the second half of that one. After trailing 24 to 10 at the half, they hold on for a 48 to 31 victory to run their record now to two and three on the season. The road is not over by a long shot, even if the journey does lead them back to the jungle at Amway Arena for this Friday night's ball game against the Milwaukee Iron. That, by the way, Teacher Appreciation Night. We'll tell you more about that in a few moments. However, for now, let's talk to the Predator coach about the way he handles or plans to handle this Milwaukee ball club. And as the Predators ride this two-game winning streak, let's bring in the happiest gentleman in the city, beautiful Pat O'Hara. Congratulations on this winning streak. First thing, you know, it is, it's just a completely different way of doing things when you're on an upswing, isn't it? Well, you know, it, it's like you and I talked about, Sean, it's a long season. Yeah. And, uh, you have to roll with the punches and the highs and lows of the of the season. It's a very competitive league, and uh, you know we're, we feel good about uh, winning the last two games. Your second win of the season came last Friday or last Saturday, excuse me, in Huntsville, Alabama, beating the Vipers. Final score of that one, 48 to 31, the second win of the year. The Predators trailed this one by 14 at halftime. You came out of the locker room and just blew their doors off, 38 to seven after halftime. Keep it clean because this is a family show, but but what did you say at halftime to inspire these guys to get them on the right track? Well, I mean, you know, it, it was literally a situation where we needed to wake up, yeah. and uh, uh, I kind of told them to wake up. Uh, <laughs> and at halftime, uh, I think those guys took note of that, and they took it upon themselves to come out, and we scored every possession that second half, and that's what we needed to do. We got the turnovers. And we really bore down, and we're determined to win that game. So the credit goes to the players. I don't want you to call anybody out or, or say anything awkward, but but without saying names, what kind of wake-up calls did people need? Well, you know, we needed to make plays when they were there. And uh, I thought offensively, uh, we needed to make the tough catch. It was a very good Alabama team. We faced very good defense. And we, we had opportunities to make plays and, and catch the ball and, and make the throw, and we weren't doing it. And uh, we gave up some cheap touchdowns defensively that uh, there's no excuse for and so we really had to clean that up and, and we turned our pass rush up and we're able to make the throws and catches in the second half that we needed to make and make the tough catch and and create turnovers and we did and we turned those turnovers into points we're seeing what kind of coach my, my cohort is here throughout this two game winning streak because in back-to-back -back games you've had to rally at halftime to get them to come back you trailed by, by 14 at Dallas, you won that one by 11. You trailed Alabama by 14, you won that one by 17. How much tougher is it to get a team to believe in itself when the scoreboard isn't on your side at any given moment? Well, you know, we have some young players that, that don't realize uh, and are learning quickly that in arena football, the score, you know, can change so quickly. That's right. And so uh, what we really need to do, though, is start faster. You know, we need to start faster and get some points on the board earlier in games. Uh, to, to build that and, and keep that going throughout the second half. And uh, our team's learning that. Uh, we're still not exactly where we need to be, but we're getting there. Let's talk about one player in particular. We've talked a lot about Nick Hill in this forum, but, but really this was probably the best we've seen out of this young AFL quarterback looking very good for the Predators last Saturday night against Alabama. Nick's numbers, uh, 34 passes complete, only 17 incomplete. He passed for 273 yards, four touchdowns, but the number that Coach will like best, no interceptions. Took care of the football and it paid off, didn't it? Yeah, you got to take care of the football, and and it's still a growing process for Nick. And Nick knows that, and, and we continue to work on that part of his game. And and as he gets more familiar with his teammates, you know, and this is a new team, new coach, uh, new scheme, and our guys are starting to to, to figure out the way we're going to play predator football, and, and we're continuing to build on that. And he will continue to get better. What has been your experience in this league? And and you've coached a lot of arena football. I know you were in AF two as well, but. How long does it take for nuances, for new coaches, for new players? Is there even a timetable to get guys to, to be comfortable for each other? Is there any magic serum? There isn't. You know, I, I, if there was a magic uh, potion to create the chemistry, uh, we'd all do it. Yep. Uh, but what we do try to do is stay consistent what we do in our coaching and, and our philosophy. And, and, you know, this road trip, Sean, and spending 11 hours there and 11 hours back on the, bu on the bus and getting a win in a very hostile environment in Alabama, 
uh, you can build chemistry off that. And uh, we're starting to see a little bit of that as we came back this week in our preparation for Milwaukee, so that's a good thing. You've got a vicious one-two punch at, at wide receiver. Guys that are really turning out to be comfortable with, with each other and are holding down each side of the field very well in Derek Lewis and T.T. Tolliver, of course. Uh, three touchdown catches combined, doing my math here real quick, about 190 yards when you put the two guys together. You know, when you can provide Nick, a young quarterback, with good experienced receivers like that, you're going to see dividends. And, yeah, you know, and it helps. And uh, they continue to get better each week. But again, you know, we're not where we need to be exactly offensively. And, and we need to continue to build on that and get that comfort level and be able to be consistent in our drives and finishing drives and scoring. And that's something that we're still working at getting done.